So, hello and welcome. My name is Steve Nabell, and today I'm speaking with Tim Wilde on Practical Ascension. And Tim is an expert in the field of ascension and spiritual progression, and he's a co-author with Diana Cooper on a really brilliant book that I'm reading at the moment called The Archangel Guide to Ascension. And if you enjoy this interview and you want more information on Tim's work or the book itself, you can go to timwild.com, and Wild is spelt W-H-I-L-D, and there'll be a link with this podcast. Morning, Tim. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, so where, where, where are you actually speaking from, Tim? I am speaking from my office in my house in Wimborne. Wimborne, okay, down in Dorset. Wimborne, Wim, yeah, down, down in Nether Dorset, lovely spot. Lovely, near the sea, I imagine. Yeah, 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 we're near the sea, we're near Very the good. sea. Well, I'm really enjoying the book, you know, I'm, I'm mostly the way through it, and um, so I want to I want to kind of refer to the book as well. Can, Absolutely. Can you, say, can you say something about the importance of this time frame, Rim, because I think we both agree we are in a, an important time frame. The, at the moment, Steve, I mean, the, this this particular time frame that we're in is it's it's incredibly important, you know, sort of to, to emphasize it in words would be very, very difficult to do because it's almost it's almost like the peak or the accumulation of what we have incarnated for in this lifetime. I mean, you know, we've been we've we've occupied physical bodies on this planet for over 260,000 years as human beings. And this is the time. This is the particular period in which we ascend into a higher state so it's it's very important well what what is this uh, mention, mentioning ascension what is the ascension process all about for people who've kind of heard about it but don't know really what it's about the ascension process is moving from the third dimension which we have been occupying for a long time into a fifth dimensional state it's it's essentially a um, a switch in vibration a vast switch in vibration the kind of the the, the description I'd use from it is moving from a, a one-bedroom house into a mansion. That is the best way to right. describe it. We are, instead of, um, what's the best way to put it, instead of occupying a, a limited state in, in which we are kind of human beings and we're living on planet Earth and we kind of just go about our everyday life wondering what the hell we're doing down here, we're actually kind of remembering who we really are, which is a vaster aspect of of that mm. it is a lot of people talk about multi-dimensionality when in your kind of metaphor one bed to mansion is it is that really what you're referring to it is yeah i mean multi-dimensionality is kind of what we're experiencing at the moment because and i'm quite an archangel michael here this is a this is a um, an article i read a couple of years ago which verified the information that i was receiving is the fact that um, human beings in their current state are actually capable of occupying four different dimensional states almost simultaneously. There's, mm. there's the third dimension, which everybody is very, very familiar with. The third dimension is the earth construction with which we were all born into, and it has existed since the fall of Atlantis 10,000 years ago. And this is what we're moving away from. The current period that we're in at the moment the period that the book refers to the book the the, the bit that we we were speaking about earlier just briefly yeah. we are currently in the fourth dimension which is a transitional period there is no more third dimension earth has moved out of this everybody on the planet all seven and a half billion or whatever of us we are existing in the fourth dimension now this is a transitional window in which we are basically releasing all of the stuff and a lot of you spiritual listeners out there will be very aware of the releasing process because it can actually be quite challenging and as we're moving through this the idea is we take enough light on board we release enough stuff we we step into a role of what i call walking mastery and penultimately the target is at the end of this 20-year period that we move into the fifth dimension now, Archangel Michael also referred to the fact that we are sixth dimensional sometimes when we've really taken our energy high mm. and we are our conscious state is is occupying the sixth dimension, which is non-physical. Once you've entered the sixth dimension, you can no longer o- occupy a physical body. That, that's just the way it operates. Yeah. So, you know, you can consciously be, you know, putting your your vibration, your 
your spiritual self into places or scenarios or situations simply by pointing your intention as if that makes sense yeah yeah for sure what can what can someone expect who's beginning to you know like go through this awakening 3d to 560 you know in terms of you know physical emotional mental spiritual it all depends on the level of resistance. I mean, so it's it's kind of it's how long's a piece of string almost. I mean, a lot of, a lot of us have done the majority of the hard work already. There's there's several soul groups who are on this pathway, who are already awake. There's the pioneer soul group, which would refer to people who have been awake for a considerable period of time, have kind of like you know found their way and 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 you know like. It's, it's almost a much, much longer-winded way of doing it. They've kind of, you know, like dabbled in crystal healing, dabbled in Reiki, been interested and and, and, and sought out information to kind of feed their their own spiritual progress. Yeah. And then you've got the groups which are waking, have woken up very recently since the cosmic moment in 2012. And they've kind of been jolted awake, with like, you know, wallop, like almost overnight, like having a bag taken off your head. Yeah. Um, you know, and sort of like from that point onwards, life is never the same again. And then you've got a group of souls who are, you know, um, currently as we we speak, waking up, and they are doing so because the vibration on this planet has risen to the point where they can no longer stay in a state where they have no recognition of what is going on around them. Yeah. Okay. So this right. this is kind of, this is what this is defining where we are at the moment this is the def definition of the different states of uh you know the the progress that we're in and the resistance you mentioned tim what is that resistance is it kind of like oh my god everything's changing too fast uh yeah. i want to hang on to the life i knew what, what would that be pretty much yeah i mean resistance can come in many forms it can come in the it can be karmic resistance where you've accumulated karmic patterning over lifetimes and and there's a pattern repeating in your in your kind of soul thread, which brings you the same lesson again and again and again, and it's it's kind of the penny's not dropping really. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> do, do you understand? I mean, yeah, we've yeah. all done, haven't we? We've all done things over and over again, and not yeah. kind of thinking, "What the hell am I doing?" That kind of thing. But you you just still drop back into that pattern. Or there's the resistance to to almost to life itself, really. You know, to the to the fact that, like, you know. The third dimension, although it's not a particularly fair or balanced place to be in, is quite a comfortable spot to be in because you've had the opportunity to hide yourself from reality, kind of add your energy to things that might not necessarily actually be um, truthful or forward moving, but you can still live on this planet and get away with it kind of thing. Now that is all coming to an end. So people are being forced into scenarios where they are being shown mirrors for their, their existence. Yeah. And that's when things become uncomfortable. If they're not being truthful themselves, they're not being truthful with others. Um, it's really about kind of just being who we are, who we've kind of incarnated to be, what 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 our soul would in, endeavour to be if it was in physical form itself, if you see what I mean. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen on the planet during this process, Tim? You know, we're going from 3D to 5D. We're in this transitional phase you know there's been all kinds of prophecies around you know from the past <laughs> yeah what do you reckon um have you got any idea are we still very fluid we can't be absolutely sure what's going on i'm there's one thing which i'd like to say like no matter what happens the ascension process is occurring on this planet there is no there is no kind of doom mongering or or kind of dark prophecy that anybody could possibly add their energy to that has any merit or value because mm. we are moving into this higher state of being and nothing can actually stop that. It's a bit like standing at the edge of the sea and shouting it and telling it not to come in. It's it's completely pointless. It's occurring. So yeah. and it's not it's not us who are fueling this ascension process, the planet or the spirit of pla the, our planet Earth has decided that she would like to experience the ascension process. Yeah. So therefore, we, are, we as human beings who've chosen to incarnate here are keeping step with a planetary body that is rising very rapidly in vibration. This is hence, you know, the whole purpose of us being here. Mm. Okay. Do you think like we're in 4D now? Um, there seems to be a lot of people on the planet that aren't choosing 5D. They're choosing something yeah. else. 
So what would you say, is there kind of uh, almost like a division of souls happening at a certain point where some people go, hey, I'm going to head up on the 5D and some people go, you know what, I ain't going there. I, I've still got a lot more hanging out to do somewhere else. I, I completely concur with that. It's at this particular point in time that those divisions, those those kind of separations in dimension and consciousness, are the, the most obvious. Um, you know, it almost puts us into a category of them and us, which is a complete illusion because we are all one. So, you know, it's it's at this point where the balance and the work that we're doing is at its most delicate because people like yourself and me, we've all got to op- we've got to operate from a very heart based point of consciousness, yeah. which means fully understanding the the sole choices of people who are a little bit later jumping on the bandwagon, so to speak. Now. There are souls occupying this planet who have not been here long enough to have fully experienced the third dimension, and they will probably choose to experience the third dimension for a little bit longer, and it won't be on the planet that we're on. There will be a different dimensional space and a very, very similar learning zone to continue. But um, when I had a conversation with Archangel Michael back in 2008... Um, and I, could, you know, it's one of those. It was one of those out of the blue conversations. It was one of the ones that stuck me onto my pathway in the in the kind of level that I'm on now. And I asked him. I said, look, you know, what is the outcome for this planet at this particular moment in time? What is the purpose of all this? You know, how many of these, you know, billions of people are going to go through the ascension process? And he said, based on the current energies, on the current levels of vibration and the work that people are doing, it's roughly going to be about six and a half billion people that go through the ascension process. And I thought to myself at the time, well, that's not good enough because that's still leaving a billion people who choose to continue to learn in 3D. But, you know, that that. This is this is the choice. You know, we we have the choice of what we do on this planet. It's what's made it such an interesting place to live. Yeah, well, uh, some of us have ha- been hanging out in three D for a while, and uh, you know that we've accumulated karma. Yeah. Say, stuff. <laughs> and in this transition period, it seems to me that a lot of that stuff is, as you you mentioned, releasing. Is yeah. there um almost like these divine dispensations that people are talking about? Can you say something about that? This kind of clearing of karma much more quickly. Very much so. I mean, we left we left what was known as the wheel of karma at the cosmic moment, and you've, this is the second time I've mentioned it now. Just for clarification, the cosmic moment yeah. was one of these incredibly um, um, important dates that that you 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 mentioned in in the prophecies. I mean, like one of the one of the most well known prophecies is the Mayans, who said that the end of the world would occur on the twenty first of December in twenty twelve, and of course, everybody's kind of waiting for for the fact that, you know, Earth will cease to exist on that date. Well, technically speaking, they were right, because the energy changed so vastly overnight that we were no longer in the third dimension on the 22nd of December. I mean, it really jumped that far. Yeah. Um, and this is why it was called the cosmic moment. There was this incredible lineup of planetary energies that shifted the whole of the Earth matrix into the fourth dimension. Now, this is why the Mayans couldn't see any further than that date, because for all of their high-frequency seers and prophecies, um, they could see up to the 21st of December, and from that point onwards, there was a brick wall, as far as their their vision was concerned, because they couldn't see any further than the dimension that they existed in. So, you know, as far as they were concerned, right, okay, well, that's the end of the world. It's a long way away. We don't care, sort of thing. That's how it was, sort of thing. But what they actually meant, what the what the scenario entailed, was the fact that the Earth's frequency changed overnight. Now, me for one, I, I thought that it was you know we were going to wake up on the twenty second December in the fifth dimension, sort of thing. Right. And I couldn't have been any, you know, you, you just didn't. We didn't know what to expect. And in actual fact, what it was, it was the first day of a lot of hard work for a lot of people because everybody who was currently awake would then have to start shifting all of the ballast very very quickly as the new vibrations came in and also care and and nurture the new souls who were waking up which they did very rapidly i mean a lot of conversations i have with people who've woken up post 2012 and their level of consciousness virtually rose overnight you know they, they realized and felt and saw everything that we'd spent a long time learning but very very quickly 
mm. if you see the def- the difference between the two soul groups and yes, the way yes. the way that they woke up it's um been quite a learning curve for me seeing how they've done it really right and I mean now the, the, there is this clearing of karma it seems to be in, in lots of different ways isn't it that uh, I hear yeah. different techniques different you know arrays right. of masters and and that's right i mean the clear the clearing of karma so i've diverged slightly that's right. <laughs> <laughs> at the cosmic moment um we left the wheel of karma which may, meant that anybody who was incarnating from that point onwards would would, would come to earth with a clean slate yes. um meaning that we'd no longer accumulate kind of incarnational karma um any karma that we accumulate now is purely done from our thoughts, words, deeds, and actions. So it's literally, you know, we're 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 creating as we go along. Anything that pre-exists within our in our previous incarnations has has to be released. Most of us are doing it through planetary service um, by dedicating ourselves to this kind of process. Or doesn't matter how big or small it is, it's all absolutely critical to what is happening here. So. It's it's all being released, but yeah, you can call for a karmic dispensation. In which case, you would then be given the opportunity to give yourself to a task, to a project, to anything in particular that is is kind of within your within your kind of um, point of focus and release it very very rapidly. In the book, uh, Tim, you talk about a lot of spiritual help and assistance being available, um, and you talk about connecting with Archangel Michael a lot. Can you just run through? some of the kind of spiritual help assistance is around as we ascend. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the first and most important thing to remember on the spiritual pathway is ask and you will receive. Um, any of the spiritual forces, any of the, any of the beings of light who are assisting us and have always been assisting us from the higher dimensions can only intercede in our, in our process if we ask them to do so. Now, along with kind of our progress into the fourth dimension, something quite um, noticeable is happening to people who've been on their pathway for quite a while or have woken up and realised where they are, is the fact that our level of consciousness has risen to a point now where a lot of us are very, very self-sufficient and can make heart-based decisions and have a lot of wisdom coming through from our own our own sources and, you know, we don't need to constantly rely on the advice of the angels or the masters because we are almost expected to take these decisions for ourselves because ultimately we know the answers to everything. So the help is there mm. and the help is always given. But you will also find there's a lot of people out there who are listening to this who are almost kind of being expected to make their own decisions because our, our it, at this point in time, our soul wisdom is really prominent it's really coming through with the right the rising in vibration on the planet mm. our vibration is rising even though a lot of people would feel that it's not and and therefore you know our our intuition is almost at a peak if you see what i mean yeah i do yes yes indeed well i do recommend people to read the book um, archangel guide to ascension if you want to know more about that particular subject and and much of the, what else we've talked about but can I ask you, uh, I know we're going to do a, a meditation on, on chakras. Can I ask you about the chakras? Um, what's happening to our old you know, 3D <laughs> chakra system during this process? No, th- th- this, is, this is one of my favourites, basically, because every, I mean, the first book, particularly the Archangel Guide to Ascension, 55 Steps to the Light, um, there's 55 steps in that book, um, as you, you've probably um, gathered by the title, and all of the steps all of the work within that book are based around the activation and the kind of the illumination of the fifth dimensional chakras. Mm. And there's 12 of them. Mm. Now it's, it's quite, it's a very, very important subject because simply on the, I think it's the summer solstice in 2014, the blueprint for the 12, the, the 12 chakras downloaded into every human being on earth not just the awakened spiritual ones but even the ones who are still asleep so all of us on earth have the ability to be using these chakras now they are the fuel they are fueling our ascension process this is the core from which we work um many people listening um are, may still be referring to the seven chakras that existed in the third dimension mm. and they're not actually um, they're not actually what I would consider functional anymore. Mm. They work, you know, they, they, they fuel the body, but 
they are almost, and it's, I'm not being harsh by saying this, but by referring to them constantly, they are still holding you in, in, in the third dimensional frequency, if you catch my drift. What we have now is a much vaster template of, of energy centers to be working with. And once you start working with them, once you start referring to them, getting to know them, um, you'll find the progress spiritually accelerates massively. It's a little bit like knowing what's going on under the bonnet of your car. You can save yourself a lot of money at the garage, basically. It's, <laughs> it's, it's knowledge and familiarity with our own processes and systems. And it's something that I've been focusing on for a long, long time now. So I've become very acquainted with that. Brilliant, brilliant. I know you're going to lead a, a kind of guided meditation into this subject. To, to Absolutely, yeah. I'll um, pass it over to you when you're ready. Okay, Steve. Well, what I'd like to do is just, everybody who's listening, is just find a sacred space. Just close your eyes and take a little bit of time to just breathe. Focus on your breath. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth and just completely relax. And just feel any stresses and strains or resistance just flowing away from the cells of your body. And this morning we're calling in the cosmic diamond violet flame, which is a higher facet of the violet flame. And just invite this beautiful iridescent energy to start flowing through your physical body. Feel it coming in through the top of your head, working down your neck, your shoulders, your arms, your hands, and just feel it in the tips of your fingers. Moving down through your body, your hips, your legs and your feet. And this is alchemizing, releasing and dissolving any density that you may have within your physical body and just leaving it sparkling and clear. and feel it spreading into your mental body which controls your thoughts and perceptions as well feel that lighting up with the cosmic diamond violet flame feel your thought process just slowing down and aligning with that of your higher self and feel the cosmic diamond violet flame spreading into your emotional body just releasing any pockets of emotion that you may be holding on to past life stuff current life stuff anything and just allow it to be dissolved and then from where you are sat start to see the cosmic diamond violet flame starting to move outwards from your physical body into your spiritual fields. Now your spiritual fields are currently in a state of expansion and these may spread all around you for anywhere up to 20 miles. So within each in-breath, breathe the violet flame into your lungs and with each out breath, see it spreading out from your bodies into your spiritual fields all around you. Any energies that don't belong to you, any just pockets of karmic energy, any stuck, any, anything that's stuck within your fields, just see it being released and dissolved now and alchemized into a much higher light. And just keep pushing the violet flame out further with every out breath. And you are now resonating at a very high level of fifth dimensional purity. So just relax for a moment into that. And just keep breathing and keep relaxing. Now within your mind, bring your attention to a bright golden light a meter above the top of your head. And this is your stellar gateway chakra. This bright golden chakra connects you to the stars and to all of the higher energies of the multiverse around you. And Archangel Metatron 
is joining you now to light it up and anchor it fully into place. So just allow him to illuminate and anchor the stellar gateway chakra a meter above the top of your head sphere. And see it glowing bright radiant gold. And now just bring your attention a bit further down to six inches above the top of your heads and see a bright magenta chakra glowing brightly there. This is your soul star. And its development is overseen by Archangel Mariel and Archangel Zadkiel. So just invite them in to light this up and anchor it in permanently for you. You may just sense and feel a little bit of activity above the top of your head as this chakra is anchored and fully activated. Bright magenta. And then directly below the soul star there is the causal, which looks like your own personal moon. And this is being lit up and anchored for you by Archangel Christiel, the Universal Angel. And the Causal Chakra connects you to the realms of spirit and to the Archangels, the Angels, and the Unicorns and all of the other pure white beings of light that have been assisting you for every step of your pathway. This is also the inflow point for all of the Divine Feminine Energies that are assisting us with this transition on the ascension process. To see this just above the top of your head, glowing like your own personal moon. And now bring your attention to your crown. Sense and feel your crown chakra and see it glowing bright gold as Archangel Jophiel, the angel of teaching and wisdom, lights it up and anchors it for you at a fifth dimensional frequency. The 5D crown, once activated, illuminates all your inner master wisdom for your ascension pathway. So just sense and feel this opening fully now. Just below the crown, feel your third eye. Just bring your attention to your third eye and sense and feel it as a pure, clear crystal ball. This is being illuminated, cleared and fully anchored for you by Archangel Raphael, the Angel of Healing. Just feel any mist or fog or any blockages within your third eye being cleared completely. Your third eye provides you with clear clarity, inner and outer vision and the ability to create reality for yourselves as a master. just bring your attention a little further down to your throat. See this glowing bright royal blue. And this is being lit up and activated by the mighty Archangel Michael. Now in the fifth dimension, the throat chakra enables us to speak our words of power, truth and wisdom with love, which is the vibration which changes and opens the hearts of everyone else around us. If you feel that you have any blockages within your throat, just ask Archangel Michael to quickly clear them for you. And just open the chakra up, so you may speak your truth at all times. attention 
to your heart center. And this is the core of your ascension process. And see this chakra within the center of your chest, glowing pure radiant white. You have been joined by Archangel Chamuel, who is now anchoring, lighting up and expanding the chakra for you. As you bring your attention to the centre of your chest, seeing it going pure white, you may even start to feel your heart centre starting to expand. This is a vast portal of light. You may even feel it expanding from shoulder to shoulder. It is so powerful. And just below your heart, See your solar plexus. It is bright radiant gold. Invite Archangel Uriel to touch this and light it up for you. And your solar plexus senses and perceives the world around you, so just in this moment invite your solar plexus to sense and perceive only love. Take a moment while he anchors this in for you. And just below the solar plexus, in the area of your navel, is your navel chakra, and this is bright radiant orange. And this is being lit up, anchored and activated by Archangel Gabriel. Now your navel chakra connects you energetically to every other soul on this planet, and not just in this planet, but throughout the multiverse. So just bring your attention to this bright orange chakra and just sense and feel your infinite connection with everyone and everything. Just moving a little further down to your sacral chakra. See, this is a beautiful, soft rose pink. The sacral chakra has done a lot of work, particularly for the divine feminine souls on this planet over the last four or five years. So just ask, ask Archangel Gabriel to do any final clearing within this chakra for you and anchor it in fully in the colour this beautiful rose pink. And moving your attention to your base, which is now liquid platinum. This is the seat of your soul, the anchoring of your mighty I am presence. And Archangel Gabriel also oversees the development of the chakra in, it, in, in its beginning phases. So just allow him to anchor the higher aspect of this into you, right now. And when this is activated at a fifth dimensional frequency, you will feel and sense your mighty I Am Presence connecting with you at the highest level. And its colour is bright platinum. Now just move your attention from your base, down your legs, to the soles of your feet. And resting below the soles of your feet is your Earth Star Chakra, and this is liquid silver. And Archangel Sandalphon oversees the development of this, so just ask him to anchor it and activate it for you fully. Your Earth Star contains all of the seeds of your spiritual potential and also the blueprints from your past lives. In Lemuria and Atlantis, it is a vast source of wisdom and knowledge. And you will also be permanently grounded into the fifth dimensional frequencies once you are familiar and using it on a permanent basis. 
so to sense and feel how grounded you feel as you bring your attention to the chakra and it is fully activated. Feel yourself bonding and blending with the higher energies available on this planet now. And this is the 12 chakras, the 12 ch ascension chakras, fully illuminated, anchored and activated for you. So just take a moment to sense and feel how your energies are. How much light do you contain now? How relaxed do you feel? And just bring your attention back to your breathing, in through your nose, and out through your mouth. Give your feet a bit of a wiggle. Ground yourself back into this reality 